What's up, everyone? It is Thursday. One more day to that weekend, baby. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel, Pound Rock. And also, if you'd like to donate to the show, you can do so. Our PayPal uh, address is right there in the description box. You can do it through uh, Super Chat or the Cash App at Dollar Sign Motorcycle Madhouse. We appreciate it all. If you can't donate, just go ahead and watch the ads over on YouTube. Let them run through, and that helps us right there if you watch them all the way through. Today, today, oh yeah, don't forget this is only the first segment of Motorcycle Madhouse Morning Mayhem. We are over on the radio, MotorcycleMadhouseRadio.com, immediately after this one, WMMRDB. I'm also on there at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time for Rock, uh, what is that, Hol Rock with Hollywood, my fault, I'm going to rock on. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I'm over there as well, playing some tunes, having some fun, uh, take us with you to work, you to download the Xeno app, the whole nine yards. Today for this show, man, I got to talk about it, you know, because I have so many haters out there that even though that what I read is in public domain, you can read it yourself. Uh, we just give a spin on it, uh, trying to give clubs, uh, you know, their viewpoint as best as we can. Uh, because most of the time, they don't even go to the media. And we've been doing a lot of coverage lately of some stuff that's been happening with the uh, pagans that messed up the rest of uh, Conan, their national president, as well as uh, Freddie uh, is a pagan, and also the Pike and Portillo case with the Banditos. So we've been doing a lot of coverage, and you get some of these haters that don't know what the hell they're talking about. You can't put clubs on uh, your YouTube channel. What are you doing? Again, it's public domain. But I wanted to, you know, I'm always good at giving the flip side of the story to our haters. Complaining that they're on the channel. And it kind of took me by surprise, some of the information that I found. You get a lot of people that compare that Sons of Anarchy stuff how much they hate it, even though you watched it. You, know, you can't lie, man. You sat there and watched it. It's entertainment. We all know that. But the cool thing to do is say, well, Sons of Anarchy ruined every damn thing. Which, in, uh, you know, if you look at it, you kind of have to believe that because tradition and protocol mean nothing anymore. And that's a sad state of affairs. It really doesn't. It don't matter how much we cry and whine about how things are today. It is a different world. And a lot of guys make their deals off of that protocol stuff because people flock to it. They love learning about that stuff, which is cool. And they also like giving their damn opinions about it. Uh, but anyway, one of the deals is their supporters don't understand that the clubs themselves, and, I, and they're going to hate to hear this, have some part in this, man. They really do. Uh, Major One Percenter Club had a big, big deal with the Sons of Anarchy. So you cannot dismiss that. I know how much you want to ignore that fact. There are clubs that are out there. And, hey, I believe in making the money, man. Go make your money. Go hustle. Do your thing. But at the same time, you can't turn around and say, you know what, this has ruined everything when you're a part of it. Ain't that hypocritical? Just a little bit, it's hypocritical in my eyes. And then, man, I was surprised like hell when I seen this. If you go on the TikTok app, you know, that thing where you dance or you do funny stuff, China Dow's all into that. I guess that is the new rage is TikTok. I call it Ticker Talk. Uh, some of it's funny. She does some funny shit on there. Uh, but anyway, when I went on there, she you know, I, I think it was somebody else, actually. I think it was one of our listeners that uh, brought it to my attention. Every single 1% major motorcycle club 
is on that thing. They have members all over the place in their cuts, uh, dancing around, doing funny bits. I was like, wait a second here. Wait, 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 time out, time out. Here I got haters. Oh, don't discuss club. Dude, it's not club business when it's in the freaking public sphere, by the way, you idiots. Uh, but you have one percenter clubs. All the majors are on there in their colors, the whole nine yards. Doing their thing on TikTok. Now that right there is hypocrisy, baby hypocrisy of all the haters running their mouths and here you got the club member sitting there right on TikTok. can anybody explain that reasoning to me i'm just wondering can you explain it to me maybe i'm dumb i'm ignorant i don't understand how these supporters and even some of the club members they're out there bitching and moaning about it but your guys are on this platform. Full colors blazing, dancing around. Yes, things sure have changed a lot, haven't they? I have to admit, a lot of things have changed. And for some platforms to go out there and bitch and moan about the biker news is funny at best. Again, I get it. You want to get out, make your money. Everybody does, even though it's scraps, if you ask me. And everybody wants to be a professional on everything that's going on. They, you know, I was actually talking to Black Dragon about this. Uh, we work well together. We work well with uh, different creators. But it always seems like when people get started, they want to go after everybody. It's not, okay, let's work all together like they're all bitching about. Well, all clubs need to get along. Uh, no, that is entertainment, man. This is entertainment. Of course, you know, they're going to go after people so they can get viewers. That is the only reason they do it. Because if they wanted to, we can all debate, have fun. Let's have a round table. We can invite all the creators and, you know, of all these uh, channels that talk protocol, and we can all have fun. That, if they, they want to bitch and moan about that stuff, let's have them fun. Let's talk. But to say that programs like this are putting freaking club business out there, you're morons. Uh, that goes the same. I know uh, BD's been given hell because he's been talking uh, biker news. Uh, and, like, you know, I'm a repetitive asshole. If you don't want it on the station, you don't want it in the public sphere, then don't be in there. And I always say it's not the club, man. It's always these people that are rogue people. So, you know, go over to TikTok and put in your favorite club, and they're all popping up on there. Every one of them, and they're one percenters. They're one percenters out there. It's like, damn, don't come back and bitch at me now. Hell no. Not after seeing that. You're talking about us putting stuff in public? Holy crap, man. I never seen people dancing in their colors before, but I guess times have really changed. But that all goes to uh, the fact that you can't have clubs blaming a um, uh, freaking series or the Mayans. The Mayans are coming out. When you actually have people that are one percenters are part of that film. Have some left their club, yes. But they got the part because they were in the uh, club scene. Sad state of affairs, man. I just don't like hypocrisy. Uh, then you have uh, one club that was doing a documentary about this one other one trying to get a writing club together. And everybody laughed at that. And it seems like when clubs do that kind of stuff, it does, uh, you know, stink of that hypocrisy and it makes everybody look bad. But hey, make your money is what I have to say. Uh, I don't remember what the hell... Uh, it was, which, uh, not the devil's ride, that was gay. Uh, 
but the one where you got the Hells Angels teaching this riding club and all the drama pops off on screen, it's actually a freaking, uh, all that stuff is scripted, by the way. Reality shows are scripted because if they're not, it would be boring as hell. So I just find that interesting that people went after us for talking hard news when uh, this is going on. Let's take a look at this real quick. Lupa! Sons of Anarchy actors were part of the Hells Angels in real life. Yes, this is the same show everybody complains about. I've complained about it. This is also the same show where people say, well, I only watched an episode or two. Man, you're lying. Don't get out there and lie. You know you watched that damn series because it was entertaining. It had to do with bikers. This show is so popular, it's unreal. Now you got the Mayans, same thing. Everybody's wishing that the damn uh, prequels would come out. David LaBerv played Happy, and he still does play Happy on Sons of Anarchy. Before he took the role of the, your favorite hitman in the club Sergeant at Arms, he was initially hired as a consultant for Sons of Anarchy. Quote, David was hired to be the technical advisor at the show's inception. After Kurt Sutter met David, he cast him on the show, and he has served both roles ever since. In fact, he even co-wrote episode 10 at uh, entitled Hands of Sons of Anarchy Season 4, which FX notes time called the best episode of the season. In addition to being a screen writer, uh, writer he's also a tattoo artist and a mechanic, which is cool, whose work has been featured in national automotive magazines. Again, make your money. He was hired for the role of technical consultant for his extracurricular activities. He was, at one point, a fully patched member of the Hells Angels. He was arrested on felony charges in Missoula, Montana in 2008 during the Hells Angels annual run. He put the off-law life behind him in 2019 when he announced on Instagram that he was parting ways. That is eight years, I believe, after he started starring in that TV show, so he was still a full-patch member of the HAMC while doing that series. Rusty Coons, he played Rain Quinn on Sons of Anarchy. Uh, the Hell's Angel with the second most mileage on the show is Rusty Coons, who played Sam Crow member Rain Quinn in 25 episodes, according to IMDb. Coons hooked up with the Sons of Anarchy crew when Kurt Sutter and series uh, star Charlie Hunnam attended an open house at Illusion Motorcycles or Illusion Motorsports, a custom motorcycle shop Coons co-owned. He was uh, Sutter was apparently impressed enough with his work that he commissioned a custom bike that was featured in the third season's DVD extras. Aside from his ability to build badass bikes, Coons was at one point the president of the Hells Angels San Fernando Valley and Orange County chapters. We imagine it's a tough sell casting a biker with a real-life resume like Coons as a prospect which is probably why Quinn was first introduced as a nomad charter president. Everybody knows Chuck Vito. He played Frankie Diamonds on the Sons of Anarchy. Uh, he was already uh, uh, in the acting and all that type of stuff. But, but he claimed he wrote it, wrote it or whatever it was. Uh, he did found and serve as a president of the Hells Angels New York Nomad chapter. And then the legend, Ralph Sonny Barger, played Lenny. Everybody knows who he is. Everybody knows he played Lenny the Pimp. 
and he had the least amount of screen time among Hell's Angels members who appeared on Sons of Anarchy. So, those were real life club members. Real life ones. And again, you also have tons of other series where clubs were involved with these shows. So how can you say that shows like this ruined the scene when club members were a part of it? They pushed it. That show was pushed and every biker seen it. I don't care if anybody's uh says, well, I didn't watch it. I, oh, you watched it. So what's that say when you have a club pushing that kind of program that everybody complains, hurt everything, making the money off of it, which, hey, do your hustle, and doing other shows, especially this new one with this writing club trying to be whatever members and acting all goofy and stupid. And then you got members of every single organization that's a big motorcycle club on TikTok. And you want to cry about me? Are you serious? You're nuts cry about me these guys are on the social media now i get it everybody loves supporting who they want to support but don't be hypocrites while doing it and acting like they do no wrong everybody is not perfect i get it when it comes to money you're damn right man they're gonna do what they need to do to make their money and they're making it legitimately. <coughs> they're making it legitimately. So you can't fault them for that. Some of them want careers, which is cool. But stay consistent is what I say. Because when you're not consistent, that makes you the hypocrite. So hopefully, your supporters that put them stupid ass comments in the comment section wake up and realize everybody's doing this stuff we're not the only ones that talk about clubs you got others that talk about clubs and their clubs are on TikTok it's like damn <laughs> Nothing says, hey, you know what, cops, go ahead and just sit in your chair. All your freaking intelligence will come from TikTok. They don't even have to work anymore. But don't sit here and complain that a uh, uh, show ruined everything. That's unreal. Now, let's go. Everybody knows Daytona Bike Week is happening. But here's a history of beer, bikes, coleslaw, and Routism. Never even knew that was a damn name. Uh, this is the 80th year of uh, Bike Week. Hell yeah. It may not be your grandfather's or even your great-grandfather's bike rally. A gathering for motorcycle race fans, a drunken party, a biker brawl, or a family vacation destination. Bike Week has changed a lot over the years. <laughs> it really has. That's why I don't like going to the damn things. Uh, it's our Mardi Gras, our Fantasy Fest, our Carnival. It's a portable 10-day street party of motorcycles of all kinds. Eye-popping costumes, bikini-clad women, sidewalk vendors, parades, Clydesdale, beers, tattoos, and alcohol. It does sound like a fucking carnival. It does. Bikers and locals alike go to nonstop concerts and bike shows. Now, it all started in 1937 when almost 100 daredevils on motorcycles raced each other on the road and packed sand of Daytona Beach in the first Daytona 200, launched by a group that included not yet NASCAR president Bill France. 
He destroyed NASCAR. Uh, 15,000 fans watch Ed Ironman Critz ride his number 38 Indian to the win before heading to Main Street. Gotta learn your history, man. Uh, this was about racing back then. Uh, it was put on hold for about five years while the country fought in and recovered from World War II, which is why they're celebrating the 80th anniversary instead of the 84th. I bet that's something you didn't know. Uh, France kicked things off again in 47, and Daytona Beach was jammed to the rafters. Uh, according to a Feb 21 story that reported every available hotel room and apartment was rest rented. Average of four to five hours for a double room. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, those should have been today. Uh, they got out of control uh, that a Chamber of Commerce committee was formed to come up with a plan in 48, endorsed by the American Motorcycle Association. The plan included checking mufflers at all approaches to the city and handing out lists of rules for behavior to all visitors to help the influx of what the AMA referred to as one percenters as compared to the 99% of motorcycle in public who are law-abiding. Now, the AMA says it didn't say that. Who knows? Uh, early bike weeks, the mile ones, the 50s, uh, the 50s event was described as quiet, orderly, the most successful racing weekend in Daytona Beach. And it's kind of sad, man. You know, the racing is awesome out there. And most people don't even go to the races, which was the original reason for Daytona Bike Week. Not a lot of people turn out, man. Uh, let's jump ahead a little bit more. 1981, uh, Gilly Aguirre, owner of Gilly's Pub 44, took a stand against the trade deficit of the day by inviting everyone to bash a Japanese bike for charity. Oh, I remember that. Oh, do I? Main Street, no colors allowed. Uh, when did that come in? Let's see here. That had to be, let's see, it don't say nothing, but uh, it had to be uh, the 80s. Uh, Carl Smith, a.k.a. Big da Daddy Rattle, along one of the forces of nature of Bike Week, was one of the first to see the commercial potential. Big and burly, he sold airbrush shirts uh, from the Rat's Hole and other shops, organized motorcycle shows. Uh, yeah, <laughs> commercial potential. You killed it, Daddy. Uh, Daytona police began cracking down more harshly on gang members while welcoming peaceful visitors. The Boot Hill was reportedly one of the first bars to ban colors to reduce rival fights, a practice that quickly spread. Throughout the 90s and into uh, the 21st century, police and bikers got friendlier and local tourism agency began marketing family activities. Yeah, it's bikers and cops. <laughs> anyway, yes. Motorcycle gang arrested with over 7,000 marijuana plants. That's heaven to Hollywood on Spain's Costa Blanca. A uh, local Guardia Civil swooped on the drug traffickers, 10 men and 3 women. Uh, they were Latavian, Serbian, and Dutch. Uh, they claim they were detained as perpetrators of the crimes of drug trafficking, theft of electricity, and belonging to criminal organization. They also found a drone, an electronic frequency uh, jammer, a fake gun, 5,000 in euros, 6 motorcycles, and 7 cars. It is believed the gang had been operating uh, in the Alcani province for four years with their only income derived from illicit activities. Uh, the motorcycle group known as Satadira, whose India uh, Satudara, whose Indian uh, Indonesian name means the same blood was founded in the 90s in Holland. Uh, since uh, 2017, many of its members have been convicted in Holland of assault, murder, illegal possession of weapons, among other crimes. Let's go to another one. Uh, this is a pretty cool one, man. The Booze Fighters. 
Motorcycle Club pays Highlander Motor in one last visit uh, with the high uh, hang on, la, 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 tongue tied there. Highlander Motor Inn in its final days, the 57 year old motel was paid one last visit over the weekend by longtime fans. About 100 members of the Motorcycle Club Booze Fighters, they're awesome, rolled up on Sunday afternoon to pay their respects to the place they've stayed and partied at every Memorial Day weekend since 1992 while participating in Rolling Thunder. The Booze Fighters were first founded in 1946 by World War II veterans. Quote, the Highlander let us get away with stuff the other hotels wouldn't have. Uh, president of the Falls Church chapter of the Booze Fighters. In honor of the Booze Fighters' longtime patronage of the Arlington Hotel, they will be getting the iconic neon sign that have uh, welcome passer vies on Wilson Boulevard. The sign will come down next week. Owner Billy Bang confirms, at which point the club will take it to their museum in Fort Worth, Texas. Love the Booze Fighters, baby. That's old school traditional clubs right there, man. Now, insurance claim for Biker Clubhouse destroyed by arson was denied over links to the Hells Angels, but the judge objects. The court is certainly aware of the name Hells Angels. However, is that enough to then conclude their presence is sufficient to constitute a material change in risk? Very interesting. Despite the notor uh, notoriety of the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club, associating with them isn't risky enough to justify not honoring an insurance payout on a biker clubhouse destroyed in an arson attack. The unusual court case followed a fire that destroyed the clubhouse of the Heretics Motorcycle Club in Sask... Well, I ain't even going with that one. Uh, the biker clubhouse was in a leased commercial building at the corner of Sorius Avenue and Albert Street on a main thoroughfare. It Until it was destroyed by fire, it was distinctive only for the club's large logo in the main window face in the street. It was the three-piece style of biker logos, which are also used in patches worn by members of so-called outlaw motorcycle clubs. The club's name is in a semicircle at the top. You guys get the point. You get the point. So, just because it was associated with the Angels or whatever it is, uh, they have to pay the piper. <laughs> Gotta pay that piper, man. Gotta pay that piper. That's only right. It's becoming more and more clear that a lot of judges are saying, you know what, they're kicking this stuff back and saying you're out of line, which is what people need to do. They really do. Until justice is actually blind and the facts are presented on both sides, can a decision be reached that is fair and impartial? And it seems some of your judges up in Canada are finally realizing it, realizing that they shouldn't be taking the word of every single damn cop like they do here in America. Word. That's one thing that always had me butthurt, man, was no matter what, man, it's like, okay, so they wear a freaking badge. Yeah, they're called cops. They're law enforcement, but you don't believe they lie. They're perf uh, they're they're big liars, man. Even the Supreme Court says they can lie to your ass, but you can't lie to them. That's BS, man. That's a double standard right there. I wish somebody would take that case back and say, you know what, you dumbasses, you erred, man. They can lie to me, but I can't lie to them. They want to catch me up on something, but I can't uh, try to protect myself. It is weird how the laws work, man. It's, it's even more weird how, you know, the rich and uh, all that, the famous, they get something that we don't. You know, if we did half the stuff they do, we'd be sitting our asses in jail right now. We really would. 
So let me know what you guys think of uh, everything we talked about today. Uh, second segment, MotorcycleMadhouseRadio.com. We usually go to about 9, 30, 10 o'clock. China Dow always comes in and, and, you know, joins me. We get freaky, man. We get uh, pretty funny and we do outlandish crap that I couldn't do here on uh, YouTube. So get over there. Uh, join us up, man. You'll have fun. With that, I will talk. Oh, yeah. By the way, uh, for those that listen to us on the podcast, uh, Spotify and all that, I'll combine the first segment and the second segment. That way it's easier, guys, for to listen to the whole show. I think you'll enjoy that a lot more. It might come out a little later uh, than the 8 a.m. stuff because after the show is recorded, I'll put it all together and put it on there as soon as I get it done every morning. So I'll talk to you guys uh, later. Get on over there, man. MotorcycleMadhouseRadio.com.